Hi, this is Andrea Hundley from Design Morsels, and you are listening to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. Hey, food bloggers, are you ready to accomplish your 2023 goals faster than you ever thought possible? If you are nodding your head yes right now, the Eat Blog Talk Mastermind program might be a great fit for you. We are now accepting applications for 2023, and I will let you in on a little secret. If you sign up before the end of November 2022, you can lock in at the current pricing. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind for more information and to apply. Brittany and Terrence are the awesome blogging duo behind plantpowercouple.com. And here they are talking about how the mastermind program can massively boost your confidence and how this can so positively impact your business. If you feel isolated, if you feel like one of the main things that's holding you back in business is like, your own struggle with believing in yourself and your own struggle with believing that you can do this, I think you need to do it. I think it's the biggest thing that can change your, your, the trajectory of your business. And your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not just, yes, you learn these things, but you gain a sense of community and support and just like accountability and you start to believe in yourself more and you start to be able to like borrow these other people's belief in yourself so that you can build yourself up while you're getting there. Hey, food bloggers, welcome to Eat Blog Talk, the podcast for food bloggers looking for the value and confidence that will move the needle forward in their businesses. This episode is sponsored by Rank IQ. I am your host, Megan Porta, and you are listening to episode number 363. I have Andrea Hunley with me today. I'm super excited. We're going to chat about six ways to think outside the box with blogging. Andrea is the creator behind Design Morsels. She writes about decorating and design. For the last four years, she has done this. Andrea successfully joined Mediavine after two years by focusing on low competition keywords and SEO. Andrea saw her traffic uptick since embracing Rank IQ. Yay, Rank IQ. <laughs> since then, Andrea's trained AVA to update her old content inside the tool to keep the momentum going. Love your strategy. It's such a powerful one, isn't it, Andrea? It is. Yes. Oh, I love it. So I'm super happy to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. Well, we want to hear what your fun fact is before we dig into this awesome conversation. Okay. My fun fact is that I jump rope almost every day. What? Okay. For exercise? Yes. I started when I turned 50. I decided, okay, I'm just going to see if I can start jumping rope just for 30 seconds. And so I started with that and I've just never stopped. And it is the most immersive exercise because I find if I put music in, I can't even think about anything else because I'm trying to focus on what am I doing with this foot or this hand or so it's completely, you can't think about anything else and you don't have to do it for that long. So it's a I good way it. to like force yourself to be in the moment. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah. So do you have a record, like how long you've done it without stopping or do you not keep track of that? I don't keep track of that. I do intervals, so I don't try to do it. It's not the length. I'm more trying to focus on, can I do this trick or that trick? Or, you know, ah, so. <laughs> what's your favorite trick? Oh, I guess probably the crossover is that was the hardest oh. one for me to get. <laughs> I remember that one from being a kid. It was so hard. And then when you get it, you're like, yes, but you get whipped in the face a few times on the yes. journey, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. Super cool, fun fact. And it means that you are in great cardio shape, probably. I don't know about that, but, oh. <laughs> but I enjoy it. I was never an exerciser before. So it's I'm excited to find something that I look forward to doing. Absolutely. I think there was another guest who said they did hula hooping, I believe, oh my a while ago. Yeah. So that's another good thing. Like something that you just wouldn't think of that people would find a passion in, but you just never know, right? Yeah, that's true. Okay. So let's talk about your blogging journey. You have six outside the box ideas to grow your blog. But first I want to hear when you started and how your journey as a blogger has unfolded for you. Okay, sure. I started about four years ago. I just in August had my four year blog anniversary. Congrats. And <laughs> thanks. And I decided four years ago that I, I've always worked with my husband who is also a blogger who has 
several successful blogs and I've kind of worked with him in the back end of the WordPress site and watched what he's been able to do with it. And I thought, I want to have something that is just only interests me and something that's just mine instead of something that is more supportive of what he's doing. And so I thought, I'm going to write about decorating and just really enjoy decorating my house. And it was a good thing for me to do once I sold my bed and breakfast, because I kind of felt like once I let that go, it's like, what do I do What besides, you know, stuff with him? So where did it go from there? Well, from there, the first person that I found when I was sort of starting blogging was a lady named Kim Anderson, and she had a coaching program and a podcast, which I listened to religiously about her. The name of her podcast at that time was Just Keep Blogging, and it was sort of a just just what the title says. It was really a lot of encouragement to just keep blogging regularly, and so I just started to find different things around my house I wanted to change and started taking pictures and meeting people and it just has moved on from there. Awesome. I always love hearing how people's blogging journeys unfold. Everyone is so unique and I love that your husband's blog was kind of an inspiration for you. I don't think I've heard that one before, so that's really cool. Usually it's the other way around. The husband see the wife's blog as an inspiration, but cool story. Okay, so how did you come up with these outside-the-box ideas? Is this just something that you've accumulated as you've grown as a blogger? Well, no, it's something really, from listening to your podcast, I thought, well, what? Uh, I'm not a food blogger, so what can I say that's different than what everybody else has been saying? So that's kind of how I came up with the ideas. Awesome, okay. Because I've gotten a lot from you, and you know, it's not. it doesn't matter if you're blogging about food or you're blogging about bicycles or you're you know, blogging yeah. about decorating. And I think it's valuable at times to step out of the world of food blogging and just see what other bloggers or other entrepreneurs in general are doing. I think that can add so much value to our businesses because we're like in this world and we hear the same things, we talk to the same people and we listen to the same people. So stepping outside a little bit. So I think this is going to be a really valuable chat because you have a similar perspective, but slightly different. So let's dig into your point. So what is the first way that we can step outside the box? Okay. I guess the first way that I'm going to suggest is to write outside your niche posts that are informative to your users. And the reason I say this, I know it goes against what a lot of experts will tell you to narrow down and narrow down and narrow down what you write about. But the reason I thought this might be a good strategy is because I started looking at, I use Ahrefs, And I started looking at when I came across a blogger that I liked, I would put put the site into Ahrefs and just, you know, try to see what they were ranking for because I was curious. And I'm looking at a lot of decorating and design blogs. And every time I'm looking at one, I'm always noticing, huh, their ranking in the top 10 of their posts is something that has nothing to do with decorating and design. In fact, one example was this lady who had a post and her second most popular post was about how to rice potatoes. She doesn't write about cooking, but she has a post that gets regular traffic about rice potatoes. And another example was an entertaining blogger that I know. She had a post that's really popular about a packing list for a specific destination. Hmm. So these posts get regular consistent traffic, but they're not necessarily what's your expertise. And the reason why that can be nice to add into the mix is because sometimes you don't have time to develop a recipe. Or for me, I don't have time to build a picnic table or whatever it is. So you might have time to write a review about your favorite kitchen tools or write a, write a post about this nonstick pan versus a ceramic nonstick kitchen you know, you know, pan. So it could be an opportunity for you to supplement your content. And I know you do that with yes. things that aren't just recipes. And you can get really good traffic from those kind of posts. I have like a 65% increase in traffic year over year right now from last year. And the reason, the main reason is because of the supplemental content that I write through Rank IQ, honestly. Without that, I would not be in this spot. And I feel very grateful and fortunate that I'm here, but that's why Rank IQ opened my eyes just to see like, oh, people are actually searching for what is marinara sauce versus spaghetti? Like what's the difference between spaghetti sauce and marinara and things like that that I never would have thought to write about, but that also can give my recipe content a boost. So this is what you're talking about, like finding something relevant, but not necessarily a recipe. Right. 
No. Yeah. And that could work for any niche. So. Yeah. Right. And food is the best place because there are so many things relating to food that we can talk about. You mentioned like this kind of pan versus that, or this kind of food versus that, or you can do substitutions. Yeah. You could, right. You could write about decorate. I mean, I know so many bloggers that write a whole post about what to serve the food on. I mean, so. Yeah, that's a good point. So if you have a lot of like holiday meal recipes, for example, then people are probably going to want going to want to know how to dress their table or or plate their food or whatever like anything on the table decor even so there's a lot that can relate to it that doesn't have to do with food no i agree yeah where do you recommend people start with this if they're like ooh sounds interesting well i think what you suggested rank iq is is the place to go and i know just looking at his library I've gotten a lot of good ideas for just random things that I never would have thought to write about. And you'll come across one and you'll think, oh, I know something about that. And even though it's not really in my wheelhouse of, you know, my pillars of content that I could easily write a post about that. And I find that the posts that I've written from his ideas are in my top 20 traffic posts pretty quickly. Same. There's so much power there. So give it a try. Love that first point, Andrea. What is your second point to think outside the box? So my second point is to delegate more. And I feel like especially women tend to not delegate and you tend to think, well, I I can do this better and therefore I should do it, which is probably true. But sometimes if you want to really grow you have to find the things that you can pass on to somebody else that even though you might be able to do them better, you could train somebody else who can leverage your skills so that you don't have to do it all. And Rank IQ is the one place where I thought, I really know I need to update old posts because I know that can help my traffic a lot. But that is a really boring task and I don't want to do it. And so I happened to come across somebody who was retired from her nurse practitioner job and looking for a way to earn extra money. Didn't know anything about Rank IQ, doesn't know anything about blogs, but you know, after two hours, that's a an easy repeatable task. She can go into my posts. I load them into Rank IQ for her. She goes in, she she thinks of it like a word game. So, and she's super reliable and doesn't change the the way I say things. She just does some word swaps where it sounds natural. And once I got comfortable with her doing that part, then I trained her to put the changes into WordPress. And so now I'm getting, you know, five posts updated a week and it's really, really pumped my traffic up this year. That is so awesome. And I just have to say, I love that you acknowledged that we all have that, like, I do it the best and nobody can do it as good as me and that that's true. And just to be okay with that, like, okay, it is probably true because it's my business. I care more than anyone else is going to care. Yes, (laughs) that is a fact, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't delegate. So you have to get to that point where you just step over that bridge and just do it anyway, even if it's uncomfortable or scary. So you found this amazing VA that is doing work for you that it's working and it's taking a load off of you. What are some other ways that we can delegate? Well, I've found just focusing on hiring people to do really specific things that they can do well instead of trying to find a general VA. Like I have someone who did a site audit for me and it's not something like what you would find from Top Hat Rank. It's more of a functional site audit because I don't want to take the time to click through everything on my blog to see, does my opt-in for work? Does my navigation work? Does this, is it? So she sort of took a look at my website from a user's perspective and didn't give me a really daunting list, but just said, Hey, you might want to, you know, a one page list, take a look at this, take a look at that. And it was something that I really didn't want to do. And I hate having somebody tell me what's wrong with the site, of course, (laughs) but she did it in a sort of more approachable to-do list way. And that was super helpful to me. And I found another VA who is really good at proofreading and editing. And so those two site consulting services is the VA that 
did the site audit and behind your every day is the VA that will do proofreading. And so I just use them for very specific tasks only. I think that's super smart. And I love something you said earlier too about just starting with a really simple task and building from there with the VA who does the keyword research for you. If it seems overwhelming to like pass, you know, your WordPress login to somebody, then just start with what you're doing with something that's really simple and doable and then graduate from there. Yeah. It it makes it easier to transition into delegating more. Oh yeah. So true. Is there anything else about delegating? Well, I guess the, my only other thing would be to say it's it's not like we're curing cancer and we can go back and you can undo anything that someone does to your site. It's WordPress makes it easier for you to see what people have changed if if you allow someone else in there and you can always undo it. So it's it's not the end of the world if you don't like it. Right. Yes. That is a great point. Okay, what is tip number 3 for thinking outside the box? So tip number three is to ignore the experts. And when I first started blogging, I went to a retreat with a lady who was really huge in my niche. And she sat us, it was a table of 12 ladies. And she sat us down and said, you know, okay, if you want to be a success, you need to post three times a week and send it to Instagram and do Facebook and do Pinterest and make sure you get the video and It was this really, and email your list every time you do a post. And it was a really daunting list of things that, oh my God, how am I going (laughs) to do all that? And so I learned over time, unfortunately, (laughs) later, that you have to really learn what you're good at and what you enjoy. Because if you try to do all the things, you're just not going to, you're just not going to keep doing it. And blogging is a really long game. It's not something which is good for those of us who've been doing it a few years, but it's not something that you can do for a year, most people, and be good at. So you need to really find the things that you enjoy doing so you want to keep doing it. There's no better way to repel a blogger from blogging than to just give them all the things they, quote, have to do. I think that is, yeah, it's disheartening to hear, like, if you're not on this platform, you're not going to succeed because that's just not true. I know so many bloggers who... (laughs) ignore a lot of platforms and they are crushing it. So it's, yes. it's a, that is false. You do not need to be everywhere. So love that, Andrea. Just kind of use your own discernment and ignore, ignore the experts sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you're really good at something, that's great. But if you like, I'll just say Instagram is the bane of my existence. I really hate posting on Instagram. And I hate getting on there because I feel like it swallows up a giant amount of my time. So I'm not going to do it. I don't, there's no no rule that says I have to. I know a food blogger who he does not have, I believe he doesn't have Instagram or Facebook. Like he doesn't even have accounts for them. And I think that is such a bold statement, but it's like, it's working for him. He does YouTube, he does his blog and he really focuses on SEO. And I just love that there are people out there who are like, no, sorry, I'm not going to do this because a lot of us, myself included, are afraid to do that. We're afraid to rebel in that big of a way, right? But clearly it's working for him, so it is possible. No, and it's interesting that you say him because, yeah. you know, <laughs> there's not many hands, right? No, working with my husband, I noticed he doesn't do any of that. And his blog is, his blogs are both significantly more successful than mine. He doesn't do Instagram. He did Pinterest only for a short amount of time, but he delegated that to someone else. But he only focuses on SEO. And I think there are a lot of male bloggers who have successful blogs who don't get bogged down in trying to build all the social media content that you don't own. So interesting. So that social media time that I'm spending, and I don't invest a lot of time these days. I used to do more, but the time that I do spend on it could be spent doing valuable SEO and keyword research, right? So it's really interesting Like I have been tempted in the past just to like throw my whole Instagram account 
in the river and like say goodbye part ways because of that, because I feel like even though it's minimal time that I'm spending there, it's still time. Well, and I feel like you're never going to be able to control what the algorithm can do. So, you know, the algorithm wants you to spend a lot of time and that's who it's going to reward is people who spend a lot of time engaging and posting. And if that's, and if you want to do that, that's great. You can make money on Instagram, but you can also make money off ads and affiliate links. So it just depends on what you want. Okay. This is my favorite point thus far, but I'm curious to hear the rest. So what is point number four? So point number four is something you alluded to earlier. It's beware of groupthink. And I really think it's important. I've heard a lot of your guests say it's really important to find a tribe and that really helps you grow as a blogger. And I think it's important to find a, a tribe both inside your niche and outside your niche. So I have two different mastermind groups that I'm in. And I know I've looked, I really want to be in your mastermind group because it's outside my, my niche. But I think it's important to hear people talk about their blogs who aren't doing what you're doing because you'll find out you get a lot of ideas that people who are sort of in the soup with you don't have. Oh my gosh. I think that's so important to, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but just to get that expertise from other entrepreneurs who aren't in the river with us, like they're not floating in the same boat, right? Like they're experiencing the same things as an entrepreneur, but they're not in the food blogging scene. There is so much value there that we don't tap into. So I love that you explore this, Andrea, and that you are a proponent of this. Do you have recommendations about where people could look outside of the food blogging niche? Well, the lady whose mastermind group I joined first was Kim Anderson, and she does these mentored mastermind groups. And everyone in them has, it's not the same niche. Like there might be a mommy blogger and a food blogger and a travel blogger, and a decor blogger. And so it's, that was one place, but also you know, as you're in Facebook groups or, you know, as you start to go to these conferences, that can be a really interesting way to meet people at different, who are in different niches and listening to different podcasts. You might come up, you know, in the comments or, you know, there's just so many ways to try to connect, but it's important to try to look for people who aren't, I think, just in your niche. And another way, I guess I've been in a lot of what we call, I don't, I haven't seen this too much in the food industry, but in the decor industry, we do a lot of what we call blog hops. And that is where you get a group of people and you all write a post. Like, let's say you want to write about fall decor and you each write a post about fall decor and you link to each other. And it's sort of like you say, you know, it's a good way to, anyway, that's not really about how to find groups outside of your group, but you can meet. I've done participated in those for non decor bloggers. And that can be an interesting way to meet people that blog, but just contact bloggers that you like following. Yeah. And and not even bloggers, right? I mean, contact another entrepreneur on social media who inspires you or says something, has a message that really aligns with something you believe in. Contact them. And maybe there's a group of people even outside the blogging niche that you could connect with. No, that's true. Yeah. I am a part of an amazing group that has nothing to do with blogging. And people, they're not all entrepreneurs, but people from like literally every niche you can imagine. And there's so much value in that. I learned so much in that group. So Ooh, what is it? Well, it's a group for podcasters, but we all have businesses that are just completely different, but the only common thread is that we all have a podcast to support our business. So, That's great. Yeah. It's called We Are Members. It's awesome. Huh. Okay. Okay. So number five, tell us what number five is. Number five really doesn't have anything to do with blogging per se, but I really feel like personal development is something that is super important to focus on because I feel like we get so wrapped up in getting this done or that done for our blog that sometimes we need to take a step back and look at ourselves and work on our habits, work on our morning routines, work on, you know, things that in in the long run make us more productive. But we have to 
spend time just with ourselves, figuring out how to improve as a person. And that ultimately ends up making our businesses better. I love this point. This is so every point I'm like, yes, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. But this is really my favorite one. I think this is like key for success. No, me too. I mean, I've completely geeked out on this, especially during the pandemic, reading all kinds of self-improvement books. But I really lately have discovered this app called Growth Day, and it has a lot of really great personal development content in it. And, you know, they have weekly lessons and daily, you know, motivational little tidbits, and it's great. And it's really helped me kind of stay motivated. Okay, talk about Growth Day. I haven't heard of that. Well, I don't know if you've heard of Brendan Burchard. I don't does have so. a podcast okay. and he, he does a lot of just motivational speaking and he has a podcast, which, you know, I don't know if I should say this, but his podcast is not my favorite thing that he does. <laughs> yeah. He has a lot of, he has a lot of books. I feel like the podcast is mostly a selling tool for the app and the app is what I've really found the most value in. And, and it's not expensive, even the lowest level of it. Every day he has a little motivational thing that he records and you can listen to And every month, there's a different topic of personal growth that he teaches about. Like one month, it'll be about relationships. One month, it'll be about conflict management. One month, it'll be about productivity. And so it's a great way to kind of, and he has a bunch of different speakers. So you don't just hear him talking. You can hear a bunch of different people's perspectives. Like Mel Robbins is is one of the coaches in there. So it's lots of different people who offer these lessons. Okay. I'm super intrigued by that. That sounds amazing and right up my alley. And there's so much opportunity for getting into personal development. So you could, I mean, just search podcasts. There's so much free content out there that you could consume. And books, I mean, the books right now are cheap. Like you can get an audio book, you can do the Audible subscription. I think it's like $16 a month and you get like free content there. It's one of my favorite new things is TikTok because you can train the TikTok algorithm to provide you what you want. So I've trained it to deliver me basically just like personal development topics. So whenever you're right, there's so much good. Yeah, there there is. I always thought TikTok was like garbage and dancing and like there's nothing good on there. But somebody enlightened me and told me, no, you can actually train it to give you what you want. And I totally have. So now when I have a bad day or if I'm just feeling like down and just icky, I open TikTok and it totally lifts me up. So that's a good free option as well. Yeah. No, there's a lot of great people on there. As long as you don't get sucked into spending, I find that I can get on there. And then an hour later, I'm like, oh, what what happened? I I do set a timer if I'm worried about that. I'll just be like, okay, I have 15 minutes. I want a good lift up. So I'll set my timer and then stop. I do have to do that too. Otherwise it's like, oh, my evening is gone. (laughs) Where'd that go? But I agree. It can be a great escape if you just need a break or you need to just take your mind off what you're working on for a little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. And a tip for that, for training TikTok, if you go into the app and you see a video that you like that inspires you, tap and hold and then you'll see a little like text pop up and you can tap on, I think it's like follow more like this or add to favorites. So if you find something you love and you tap add to favorites, TikTok will be like, okay, she really likes this. So then it'll start delivering more of that. If you don't like something, scroll past it fast. And that is a sign that you don't like it. And then if you really hate something, like I don't want to know about this topic tap and hold. And there's also a a little um, not interested selection. So do not interested. And then it knows not to deliver that anymore. Oh, that's a great tip. No, I mean, I think it's surprisingly better at knowing what you really are interested in than Instagram. (laughs) Oh, 100%. I didn't believe it until, yeah, until I just got in and started exploring myself. But it's so great. I never thought I would. A year ago, if I heard myself, future Megan, say that, I'd be like, no, there's no way. I was so anti-TikTok and now I'm like, I love it so much. It's just such a good, positive place for personal development and other things because of that. You're right. It can be. And that's nothing you ever would have thought of. But you're right. There's a lot of good motivational stuff on there. Yes. Okay. Anything else about personal development that you wanted to mention, Andrea? 
Not really. I mean, I listed a bunch of books that you can put in the show yes, notes. But. They were awesome books. So we, we will put those in show notes. Okay. Last but not least, what is tip number six? So the last thing I would say is to focus on what I would call passive income strategies instead of followers. And I know a lot of people talk about, you know, you really need to write to your audience. But I know, I feel like 90% of your traffic if you're writing for SEO is coming from Google, which is you're solving someone's problem. And their problem might be, I want to cook chicken Parmesan tonight. And if I want to cook chicken Parmesan, which I cook a lot, I'm not going to go find my favorite bloggers, food bloggers. I'm going to go to Mm -hmm. Google and I'm going to say, what's the best recipe for chicken Parmesan? And I'm going to come with, with three posts and I might not follow those people. I might not ever land on another recipe of theirs. So I feel like you really should focus on SEO and not on doing what your followers want because most of your traffic isn't coming from your followers. It's coming from people who are searching for a problem that you can solve. That is so interesting. I've stopped nurturing an audience on my food blog. I hate to even put that those words out into the world because I know it's (laughs) such a like, what? You need to nurture. But I've stopped doing that and I've done exactly what you said. I'm just focused on getting traffic right now because that that is working for me more than ever before any other strategy that I've employed as far as like, okay, build up this email list and nurture your people. Not saying that email is bad. It's very good. But you know what I mean? Like it just wasn't paying out for me. But now that I'm focusing on solving those really quick problems that people have, that's working. So I'm, yeah, I've been shifting my focus there too. Yeah. I mean, it's not to say that you can't, I I use email too. And I would say email is probably the place where I do speak to my audience. If you could even say I have an audience, but you know, I guess if they care enough to open the email, I could consider them my audience, but I doubt they're, I know a lot of people in my niche who think that, Ooh, you know, people are going to be upset if I don't send out an email today. And I really have found that my traffic on, I send my email once a week, but my traffic, if I don't send the email is, you know, not significantly lower. So right. am I really getting that much from my followers or am I just getting it from people who want to know how high to hang their chandelier? Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I am so with you on that. Okay. I feel like you tapped into my brain, Andrea, with all of these. These are so good. Is there anything we've forgotten on each of them that you want to mention before we start saying goodbye? I don't think so. I guess we didn't talk too much about tools, but I I use a lot of the same tools as everybody that you've talked to. Maybe the only ones that I haven't heard your audience mention is a headline studio, which is really helpful for titles. Oh, talk about that a little bit. It's a website where you can, and there's a free version. They try to make you get the paid version, but the free version is just great. And you put in your title and it kind of grades it and tells you, you need more of this type of word or you need more words in general. And so it helps you write more compelling titles. And I found that as I went back and looked at my really old content, the titles were terrible. So that helps me with title writing. Okay. You just proved your own point that talking to someone outside of your niche can provide tools and value that you'd never heard of or thought about before. So I have Growth Day and this new tool that you mentioned. Mention it again. Headline Studio. Headline Studio. Never heard of that. So (laughs) yes, thank you so much for that value. Is there anything else you wanted to say about tools? Anything else that is really helpful for you? I guess going back to the first person who inspired me, you just gotta gotta keep blogging and that's the key to it. And just keep going. And if you're hitting a stumbling block, just change gears and write about something else. That's why the writing outside your your niche can be sort of a something that gives your brain a break about food. Yeah. Awesome, Andrea. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time out for us today. It's been a pleasure. All right. Great. Well, it was fun talking to you and I enjoy your podcast so much. (laughs) Oh, yay. I love hearing that. So I know you just delivered some words of inspiration. Did you have anything additional, a quote, a favorite quote or anything else? I guess my, I have two quotes. I had to narrow it down because I do keep, I keep these in a book, you know, like Gretchen Rubin. Love it. But uh, (laughs) my first quote 
would be that not taking action is an action. And mm-hmm. I see this with a lot of people that I, I talk to. We have to encourage each other to just go ahead and take the action because by not taking the action, that's a different action. Okay, that is deep. Not taking action is an action. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Okay. Do you have another one? Since you're a quote person, I want to hear what else you like. The other one is just more of a growth mindset kind of quote, which is the way we choose to see the world creates the world we see. So true. Oh my goodness. So, and I didn't, I, sorry, I don't know who came up with either one of those quotes. They're not mine. And I didn't write down who came just up with them. Just claim them. You're good. <laughs> I love them. That is so, that so aligns with just the way I live too. So thank you so much for sharing those. We'll put together a show notes page for you, Andrea. If anyone wants to go look at all of the resources that Andrea has, books, et cetera, to help with personal development and professional development, go to eblogtalk.com forward slash design morsels. Tell everyone where they can find you, Andrea, online and on social media. Well, You can't really find me on social media. You can, but nothing I have that's currently out there except for, yeah. So the best place to find me is on my blog, which is at designmorsels.com. Awesome. Go check Andrea out. And thanks for being here, Andrea. And thank you so much for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. Please share this episode with a friend who would benefit from tuning in. I will see you next time.